Hey, what's up? This is Sergey, and welcome to Bizarre Self-Production. Uh, as you might have noticed, I was poking around Houdini while nobody was looking. Again. And now we have another accidental tutorial. Uh, not really sure if anybody would need that sort of thing. I mean, you can go play Minecraft if you are craving for that sort of environment. But if you would like to create something with a bit of more control rather than go and exporting your Minecraft uh, world into 3D and then just getting stuck with what you have, you can do it procedurally in Houdini actually, and rather quickly, I might add. So I won't be touching upon the look dev stuff and the uh, actual terrain thing, because I assume you guys already know that. So I'll just show you a quick trick of how make it cubicle basically uh that sort of thing i think you can u actually use it for a lego type of structures as well with just slightly uh adjusted type of top cube things okay never mind i'm rumbling again let's uh dive into the actual trick i was using if the scene actually loads because the the base is still a height field converted to polygons, so it uh, might be a bit heavy to begin with. So yeah, uh, let's uh, start from the beginning. Uh, actually, let's hide everything for now. So we have a height field. Once again, I assume you know how to use height fields, so let's just uh, skip that thing. And I just show whatever I had as a base. Just some um, scattered mountains, hills, and that sort of thing. Then I convert it to polygon. I actually started using Teres uh, here, thinking that it might help, but it actually has no effect on the final uh, product whatsoever. Uh, but it could help you just visualize how it would potentially look before you do all the adjustments to the geo. Then we'll just remove all the prims, and we'll just... Uh, leave ourselves a point cloud in the shape of a mountain range and as you might have noticed from the name i put on this wrangle it's simple renting kind of sort of stuff so you just pick the size of the cube that you would stick with and keep in mind you have to be consistent across the whole scene with that size so whatever cubes you'll be using later on should be like four by four by four basically Otherwise, you will mismatch scale-wise. Uh, it will just create those neatly arranged uh, points for us to play with. From that point, uh, you can probably take several approaches to how I actually populate the scene with cubes. I was very lazy. I just used grid and extruded it quite a bit and then copied to points. You can actually measure the distance if you need, like, the base ground. For example, you can take uh, the same height field, convert it right away, and just shift it somewhere below, for example. Calculate the distance between every point and extrude it in a cycle or whatever. Not really sure whether it takes faster or not. Maybe after it's compiled it will. I didn't like this approach for my particular uh, case, so I just stick with the copy to points th stuff. So there we go, slight a bit of weight, and that's it. We have our cubes in here. Well, let's drop a normal as well. And from that point on, the, the trick is to work with your groups properly. So I created a top surface with a just normal thing, and then subdivided, well, not subdivided, but actually divided them into layers it's easily done if you have a grid uh, that can guide you, for example, uh, like such one. So I can clearly see, okay, the thing that is being cut off will be a snow tops. Everything below would be just grassy plains. And in another scene, I have actually a water uh, layer that is, you know, bring here with like, some expression. I don't even remember where I put it. But yeah, I just put groups and operate within them to divide them and split into a certain amount of uh, subgroups, basically, being the ground, the grass, the snow, and so on. So then we can use the points 
on top of the cubes to scatter grass later on. One more time, I just use the expressions to keep me sort things out nicely. Let us disable that kind of thing. And in the end, we'll end up with really nice uh, environment, which is all cubes. Look at that. Uh, the grass the tree is pretty self-explanatory, I think. The grass is basically just a grid that's being copied to points and it's slightly deformed. So I'm not really sure I have to... Uh, yep. I have to really tell you how to do that. If you know how to drop a mountain node, you'll be fine. Uh, and the trees is basically L system with the same uh, adjustment of renting. So I didn't, I mean, I could procedurally create a whole bunch of different trees, but I didn't want to. And I just placed them individually. You can scatter them later on. But yeah, it's basically L system. And then we do the same trick. We delete all the uh, unnecessary points. Uh, sorry, prims. Leaving just the points, and then we arrange them in the same manner with renting. Uh, be mindful of the 4x4 four four kind of thing. And then we copy the uh, cubes to the same spots. And that's the thing, you can later on just, you know, go over and create a whole bunch of trees cubically. I mean... This monstrosity will probably not be qualified as a tree, but you got the point. You have uh, easily achieved the Minecraft look for the trunk, at least. And the branches can be done in the same manner, with just randomly extruding stuff. And then I did uh, put a remesh and uh, assigned a random attribute to the prims and just blasted some of them. That way you have this Minecrafty tree look, basically. And in the end, as I said, you will get really at least resembling a Minecraft scene if you're into that sort of stuff. I mean, I played Minecraft decades ago, I think. Uh, all right, so yeah, if you can come up with an idea to replace the grass, for example, with the Lego. Uh, pointy things, I forgot how they called, then you will be able to actually convert the same environment into a Lego style. I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be that hard. But yeah, that's a, that's a quick one for you guys. Hopefully you will find this useful in some sort of way. Uh, but yeah. Uh, all right, uh, hopefully next time it would be much more exciting. If you have any questions, leave in the comment section below or, uh, you know, poke around my channel and see if you find, can find anything useful in there as well. That's it for me. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.